Hello and welcome to 4,000 and Counted, presented by Hurricane E-Bikes, our brand new title sponsor. I am joined by Mark and Mr. Liam Kirk himself has joined us live from the GB camp. Kirky, thanks for your second appearance on 4,000 and Counting, mate. How's camp going? Yeah, it's good. It's been all right. Yeah, it's a long day today. Uh, two practices, so always are pretty tired, but it's been good. It's good to get everyone you know, back together again and, and just get the ball rolling. Speaking of being tired, I was, I was speaking to Oki. I just said, "Sure, yeah, off fair. He's already in bed. I th- think the, these two days are killing the killing the old man. How how are these two days like? Are they hard? Are they intense? What's the kind of what's the kind of practice level like? No, not too bad. Obviously, it's like two practices around forty five meters long, both uh, both um, just competitive, just high energy and fast pace. But it's just long days, right? We started this morning breakfast at six forty five, and then. We went back to the hotel for dinner at like 6.50, but it's just a lot of like, go, come back, eat, go, come back, eat. So just long days, but I always sound complaining when everyone works like a normal nine to five job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, your mum and dad are listening and go, get in there, come on. Yeah. We're working yeah. hard. What's it uh, What's it been like having some new faces? It's obviously, Shirley Norris, Kieran Brown. That's kind of been the the talk of the town at the moment. The fact that a couple well, of my night... teammate there were Brownie, eh? Yeah, exactly. So, what's it What's it like having those those fellas break into the squad? Yeah, it's good. Obviously, you know, um, you know, with John retiring, and you know, look at the, the the veterans on the team and they're starting to get a lot, you know, the back end of the career and stuff like that. So, it's good to be bringing these young guys in, and like I said, just to get the experience, been around the the team the staff. You know the systems play, the, what the environment's like, what the culture's like, and you know these guys, like I said, like Jono and Dowdy and Benny and you know Richie Davy, all these guys, Mizey, you know, they've built a culture here that's um, you know it's you've seen the 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 tournaments they've been at and all the work that they've put in to get to where we are now. It's you know so you want to keep that culture going forward. So it's nice that you know a lot of young faces can come in and see what it's like and then just like I said, carry it on. Because you was the baby, right? When, when was your first call up? You 17, 18? Yeah, I was 18, yeah, in Budapest when we won. So not a bad first trip, but they let you take a penalty shot as well, right? In that tournament? Yeah, well, we already we already won back the goal by then. So it was like, oh, just go do what you want. So try the stupid Kutrov move like an idiot, but <laughs> one's good experience. It had the balls to do it though. Uh, well, we already won gold, so it was like yeah, yeah, you can if just... it was a different circumstance, then probably not. <laughs> We are very, very happy to announce that Hurricane E-Bikes are now our title sponsor for 4,000 and Counting Podcast. Hurricane E-Bikes are the subscription pay-as-you-go e-bike service. You can swap them out anytime, change them. You get spare tires. You don't have to be locked into a long-term deal. They come out. They service your bikes. They That even includes like wear and tear. You get a lifetime warranty with one of the Hurricane e-bikes, which is amazing. They start from as little as £1.85 per day. Includes a lock as well. Like The website's very good. If you head over to hurricane.bike, so that is H-U-R-R-E-C-A-N-E dot bike. You'll be able to go onto the website, how it works. You select your bike. You then add your accessories, whether you want helmets, locks, etc. Confirm your details. And it's simple as that. It will be on its way to you. They have a few options available. They have a few different color options available. They have the Freedom 400 step through. They have the Freedom 410 hybrid, the Freedom 420 hybrid, uh, then they've got some some really cool looking F220 fat bikes. They're awesome. They've got that in black. They've got that in purple. They got their H250 cruiser bike. Again, looks really really cool. And then this one's these are these are my favorite ones. I'm guessing these are probably going to be the most expensive ones. But my favorite ones, the M250 mountain bike, pedal assist levels five. So if you've got bad knees or bad back, but you still want to get out on your bike, that is the way to do it. You've got the M350 mountain bike. That's for off-roading. Any of you guys that want to, girls that want to get out in the hills, out in the mountains, down the paths, get involved in some fun stuff. That is also pedal assist five. So it helps anybody that's got injuries. And even if you're not injured, you just want to get out. You want to zip around, have some fun. I've rode these bikes at the Ozone tournament. They are great fun. And finally, you have the RS8 e-bike off-road. 
that comes in like a matte black absolutely cool lifetime warranty for all bikes for your lcd screens for your batteries for your motor all the components no expensive bills come in later on put everything together no servicing costs no need to buy no interest costs no long-term agreement no maintenance costs no worries lifetime warranty so head to hurricane e-bikes and check out our new sponsor that that was speaking of Oki, he's he's done some crazy things on penalty shots like uh, yeah. high pressure situations going through the legs and the stop and spin yeah i'm gonna come down and try and go forehand backhand five five i think just nice and safe what's what's a uh what's a year been like for you because obviously you started you was at camp it looked like you had a good camp and then you was up and down between the a and the coast and then you finished off in Finland, where you had an exceptional time and really good point production. Let's go back to like coming out of camp. How was training camp for you? Yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind over here. Obviously, it's something I didn't expect. And obviously, you kind of like to plan out your season. And especially coming off my injury, it was, uh, you know, the whole time I was in rehab was just kind of like planning ahead to what it'd be like and, and coming back and playing in Tucson and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, camp was. Um, it was okay. Obviously, I didn't expect much. Obviously, like I said, coming off that injury and not playing hockey for a year is definitely, obviously, for me, it was just getting out there, getting reps and stuff like that. So I didn't really expect much from camp, but I had pretty good two preseason games in Tucson. Um, and obviously, we had so many bodies and they signed a lot of older guys on, on, on big contracts and stuff like that. So I knew it was going to be hard to, to get into the starting lineup for the, you know, the first few games, but and, you know, as time went on, it just nothing, nothing seemed to change. And, and the only feedback I really got was just it was um, just to do with contracts. And I was you know, working hard in practice, doing the right things. And that my time would come when there'd be call-ups or injuries and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it was just, just a lot of waiting around. And uh, it got to a point where it was just you know, not really benefiting me. Obviously, like I said, coming off a year of not playing a lot of uh, hockey with the injury, it's like I needed minutes, needed game time. So, um, yeah, I decided it was best for me to go to Atlanta and, that was only supposed to be for a short time and um what like conditioning so, stint or something. Yeah, just they said, you know, go for you know, it didn't expect me there to be long, go play lots of minutes, few few five, six games, and then uh, you know, by that time they expected, you know, injuries and call ups and what trades and stuff like that. You know, it's different business over there, but obviously it just wasn't meant to be, I guess. And uh opportunity came up in Europe and you know, obviously uh, Arizona have the just you know the the end decision in that, and they thought it was best for me uh, to go and play in Finland. And to be honest, I think that was the best thing for me as well at the time. And yeah, I enjoyed it, man. I loved it. It was awesome. The the people there, the staff, co- coaching staff, you know, just all the staff around the rink, media, equipment guys, and then and the players were awesome. I, I loved it. I loved my time there. Yeah, I can't say enough good things about about Ukraine. We know um, we've always said the Liga is one of the best in the world, but did it meet your expectations? Was is it as good as thought as you thought it would be? Yeah, I mean, obviously, my first two games, I got off to a pretty hard start. I had like four points or something. My first two games, I was like, oh, wow, this is like, it's known for a defensive league and not many points. I was like, I'm smashing it. But so we started <laughs> to dr- dr- dry it out pretty quick. But yeah, it was uh, it's a tough league. It's, you know, a lot of, a lot of skill, a lot of pace. You know, very defensive, very trap style of hockey. Obviously, Finland's very famous for that. But like I said I learned a lot, and and like I said, being able to play in the top six and uh, you know run a power play and in a in a league like that, you know, it's only going to benefit me and, and make me a better player. So it was awesome. Like I said, I can't can't thank that the team enough for you know, wanting to bring me in and, and give me them opportunities and you know make make me a better player. You've touched on the fact that you were injured a couple of times. Talk us through what happened in the injury and then like the rehab. How did you go about like rehab and get back to full strength? Yeah, so I was in a game in I think it was um November time, maybe October time, something like that. I think it was just just the start of November and I was in a game in, in Vegas and um just kind of went to hit a guy behind the net and my skate kind of got caught in a bad bit of ice and just went off in a different direction. I felt a little pop. Well, you know, I've and I, I heard stories. Uh, of guys that have had knee injuries and, and they tried to stand up and they just, you know, like collapse and stuff. So I, when I felt them, heard the pop, I just like, I'll just stay down. But there's no pain or anything like that. Just kind of a numb feeling. So I went off, they did a couple tests and they said, yeah, you're going to have to get an MRI. And to be honest, I was, after the MRI, I was pretty hopeful. I was, I was walking and pretty much doing all the exercise in the gym, like a week after I had my MRI, just waiting for a result. 
I remember Alicia, my fiance, she was with me at the time, and I remember saying to her, like, it's just going to be a four, four to six kind of deal. And they called me on the way home and uh, uh, and said, yeah, it's fully gone. You need surgery. So yeah, I was pretty bummed out by that. And obviously, first time for me that I've had, ever had to go through surgery or anything like that. It was pretty scary. But um, yeah, no, surgery went well and did that in Tucson and then did my rehab. Uh, in Tucson as well obviously I just, I just want to be around the team my first year there I want to be around the guys the staff obviously learn what it's like in that environment and obviously I plan to be there the year after but uh, yeah it was it was tough long um, you know mentally challenging but uh, I mean I had good support around me and my family and uh, Alicia and, uh, and the, the staff in Tucson were very you know very supportive as well the medical staff and, and the, the strength conditioning coach so yeah rehab went well and uh yeah, knee's okay now. A little bit of pain and, and ache and stuff, but other than that, it's all good. Judging by your story, I would rather be injured in Tucson than Sheffield. The weather, <laughs> the weather, the weather looked quite nice. I see some yeah, of the sh- yeah. some of the shots, and it, it looked all right where you were living. Like, yeah, it was nice. Kind of felt like I was, you know, cheating life a bit because I was getting paid at the same time. Like, you know, <laughs> I was still injured, so the rehab sucked. But when you go and sit by a pool and and you're making nice money, it was. Uh, you know, you feel like you, like you Jack said, cheating life a little bit. But talking talking about like the, the money, obviously it's different for you because you you get signed on a on an NHL contract and then you get the money depending on whether you're on a one way or two way, and and things like that. How how much of a difference would it make to you just to get that one NHL game in terms of like financially securing your yeah. future? And like it's crazy, isn't it? Like all the yeah, deals. It's crazy. I think I don't think to be honest, unless you're you're a full time NHL player, I don't think it's gonna uh you know set you up for life and stuff. You're still gonna have to work and stuff like that. Um, you know, once you finish playing. But you know, a couple of the guys when I was in Tucson, uh, towards the end of the year, obviously Arizona didn't make playoffs and stuff, so they brought up a lot of younger players and stuff. And when they came down and showed me the two week salary they get compared to the American League, it's a yeah, it's a bit of a joke. So you can only imagine, and that's on an entry level, so you can only imagine what these guys that get that are on top deals and stuff yeah it's crazy yes well i don't know it'd help if they stopped paying like datsuk and everybody else that retired in like <laughs> 2005 there'd be yeah. some more got to get that cap for us somehow yeah, have you exactly. been to the the new what do they call it the mullet arena the mullet no no we weren't allowed to do training camp there it looks uh, mental um, yeah they're not allowed to practice there. i don't think on certain days or whatever because obviously the um the asu team's there so you can't interact with college players and stuff like that yeah but no i didn't didn't get to see it but it looks pretty looks pretty cool obviously like i said for fans anyway getting to go watch nhl and every seat's pretty much a, a lower bowl which would be a thousand dollar ticket in some places it's oh, pretty, yeah. pretty cool yeah i've heard it's good atmosphere as well so with your connection to to the coyotes and stuff like that when you had that world championships you had where you're coming off of like seven goals and seven games right up there, top scorer, what are they reaching out to you? Are they talking to you? What's the kind of dialogue? Obviously you're blowing up UK hockey world. Everyone knows that you're doing it. You're, you're sniping left, right and center, but even like North of the pond, right, you're on sports center, you're on sports net, you're on all these different channels scoring these goals. What was like the reach back from them? Yeah, it's weird. I don't really know how much I, I can say or whatever, but it was uh it was weird. And to be honest, the, the, the trend right after the um the World Championships was that I wasn't they, they wasn't going to sign me, and it was I was very close to heading to uh to Finland that year. Um, yeah, tra- kind of trend pretty much right afterwards that they didn't want to sign me, and then it was you know you hear stuff like a trade and stuff like that, and nothing ever ever really came about it but it was kind of like on the day I was going to sign with the team in Finland my agent reached out and said just hold off and wait one more day I've got a meeting with the with the Coyotes and then and then a couple of days later yeah my agent just sent me through a contract and said yeah they've sent you a, an entry level what do you think and all that stuff so yeah but yeah right after the Worlds it was kind of trending on a on me going to Finland that's what that's what it felt like was going to happen yeah it's interesting hearing that side of it because obviously yeah other than Tony way back and she sheds way back as well. We haven't had anyone at current be involved with any of these sort of situations, whether it be entry level deals and all that. You talked about some of the guys that got their entry levels. They're up, up in the NHL. Were they, uh, were they blowing their bonuses on anything? Were they, were they having some fun that summer or what? 
Uh, I mean, yeah, there's a couple, a couple guys, that obviously, especially the ones that know they're going to be there for the the long haul. There's a few that spend quite a little bit, but I think majority majority of guys are pretty smart, and obviously there's a lot of um, you know, uh, staff that um, you know, they do meetings and stuff at the development camps and stuff, and they sh show the importance of you know making sure your money's well taken care of and how quickly it can go. And hear so many stories, right? And they bring guys in to tell stories as well. So, you know, obviously they 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 try their best to educate. You know the young players coming through to make sure that they, you know, they're smart with their financial, uh, you know, stuff like that. Given the training camps then over in North America, I know this is going to be stupid to compare it with how it is over the elite, but could you sort of give us an insight into just how detailed it is? So watching some of these videos on the NHL and their training camps and the regimes they go through is solid. Yeah, it's fast. It, it's, it's fast paced, man. It's um, definitely, especially when they brought the new coaching, uh, it's definitely, you know, intense and very detailed and they want everything to be on point. Man. Obviously, it's the best league in the world, right? So they want the best players and even the, you know, everyone needs to be on point and it's just very fast paced. You know, you got to be high compete and best shape of your life, uh, you know, every time you come into camp and if, if not better, pretty much every year you need to be better than what you were last year. So, it's intense and it's but it's fun, right? Like it's something that like when I look back and think, you know, as a kid from Albany when I was playing in for Sheffield and the Steelers, it's just seems so far away and something that you don't think is gonna happen. And then when you're there, you know, doing these camps, competing with these all stars, it's 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 pretty cool. But yeah, it's fun. Obviously it's uh yeah, a lot of work. Um yeah. <laughs> grind. It's a grind. Who, who's the uh who's the one guy that when you step out on the ice, you're like, woo, he's a bit different. Like, you know, if when you get to skate with these top level boys. I think obviously the, the main one that stands out, especially in Arizona, is Calorie. He's just so good on the puck and so so deceptive. Um, just the stuff he does offensively is just pretty pretty special. But even still, like he's, he's all around the game. He's he's like one of the hardest workers and competitors out there every practice. And yeah, like he just wants to win. Like he wants to win, score goals, make plays and and yeah, he's pretty pretty cool to be able to see him, uh, you know, up, up up close and see him play. I would love to see him. And no disrespect to Arizona here, but I would love to see him on a team with a chance because he's that sort of player that could pop up like and score, you know, on a on a eighteen game or whatever it is playoffs. He could pop up and score ten twelve goals. He's phenomenal talent. Yeah, no, for sure, he's a he's a really good player. But they got a lot, got a lot of young. Players coming through now, and um, in, you know the the trend for Arizona seems to be on the way up, and uh, you know they're like I said the with the new arena that they're planning to to get built and stuff. It seems like it's going to be um, you know, exciting time for 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 that club. Well, they're gonna get they're gonna get Austin Matthews after Tampa sweep Toronto in four right now. Matthews is gonna check out, go back to the desert. Could you? What would it be like around that place if a guy like him went back there? Oh, I can imagine being buzzing. Obviously, he trains there in the summer, so I, he was skating there when I was there this summer. So I got to skate, skate with him, and uh, it's kind of you see a lot of kids come around the rink and stuff. And obviously, he's a he's a big name around there. And I think, like I say, it's going to be good for the for the hockey. It's definitely growing in Arizona, and obviously, he's a huge name that had been from that from Arizona would only make it you know grow a lot more. So, what was it like skating with him? Yeah, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty. <laughs> Pretty cool. I mean, like, to be honest, most of the time we, we didn't really do drills because there was a lot of NHL guys coming in the summer skates. So it was just uh, like four and four scrimmages. And to be honest, don't really touch the puck. <laughs> <laughs> you skate up and down. They, 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 they kind of, um, you know, they, they play with themselves. It was pretty cool. We can't, I remember this one time I um, was in the four and four and I tried to sling my pass across the ice. And it was his feet, but he just like in stride, collect it on his stick like toe drag shot release I was like this is like if that's it in my foot I'm probably toe picking but... <laughs> blow your other knee out like that's it <laughs> <laughs> but honestly when you watch these when you watch these guys even like most recently like the highest level game I would have seen would have been at the world championships in, in person when you're when you're out there and you're playing against these guys you can see how good they are the one thing that I wanted to ask because we haven't had a Brit really do it Training camp wise, you're getting to go against NHL goalies, and then at the World Champs, putting seven past high level goalies. What what's it like shooting on on goalies that are literally NHL caliber? Yeah, I think the the main thing is like goalies. 
everywhere now, but obviously the NHL, they're just so good. They're so good. If they see a puck that's just coming on them straight, that you know, you expect them. They get paid millions to stop it, right? So sure. the main thing is just trying to get them to move side to side and stuff like that. But I think that's the same anywhere now. Goalies are just getting so good and the, so many, you know, different techniques they have to just stop pucks in certain situations. They just got to get them moving. Well, you did all right at the World Champs. Yeah, yeah, it was obviously it was um it was nice, unexpected to be honest. When going to that tournament, I knew the situation I was in. I just wanted to go and have a good tournament and play play good away from the puck mainly. That's the kind of the main thing that was stopping me from getting to the next level, I guess, was from a game away from the puck and, and defensively and stuff. So that was kind of my mindset and just enjoying it, just off coming off a year where no one really played hockey and it was all over, just enjoying being with this group. Obviously every time you're here it's it, it's special and it's not as Paul jersey. It's just enjoying that moment and and getting to play again and to play at that that top level, and yeah, and it just the puck seemed to kept going in. I think it was the the goal I got given against Sweden when Cons went sliding into net. I think when that one went in, it was kind of like, oh, okay, this is how the tournament's going. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting these it. kind of goals, yeah. So yeah, it was just, um, but yeah, it was not for no, didn't, definitely didn't expect it, but it was pretty pretty cool to 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 be able to you know, have have some success at that tournament. Was there a particular player that took you under under their wing when whilst you were in Arizona that sort of guided you a little bit and showed you how things were? Uh, no, not not particularly. I think it's uh, like I said, it's it's a very dog eat dog world uh, over there. I don't say everyone's everyone's obviously nice and friendly and stuff, but obviously it's um, everyone's fighting for you know, a job. job. There's, there's only twenty three spots on a on a roster, right? So everyone's fighting for them twenty three and. There's a lot of guys coming in and out of camp that, you know, NHL players that are, um, you know, towards the back end of the career and they're the same thing, right? They're trying to fight for that job. So, but uh, a lot of old guys, Jason Demers, he was very nice and, and welcoming and uh, just keep keep it light and friendly and ask you questions and stuff. It just made you feel comfortable, really. But yeah, I didn't really, not anyone in particular took me under the wing to to say. When When you're at these camps, obviously we see, it don't, doesn't don't really matter when you went to Finland as well. The social media teams seem to uh, love you, love the fact that you're from the UK. What's it like being like, I don't know, you're kind of a bit like Jack the Lad, really, because they're they're all over you. Yeah, I get a lot of uh, a lot of stick for it, but it's uh, obviously a seventh round draft pick shouldn't get that much media. <laughs> being, being from Britain, it definitely um, definitely get a little bit more, but obviously just the fans, like the fans in England are crazy. You see it when they come for the GB games, how passionate they are and how passionate they are for the club teams as well. So, yeah, every, everyone's been so supportive of me and my journey. And like I said, I can't thank them enough for, for, for being behind me. And, yeah, it definitely helps when you go to a new team and they're like, oh, we just got a boost in social media. And I'm like, well, <laughs> remember, remember that when, when I'm looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, like I when you went to Finland, I was like, they're literally just – Every time it was like every time you got an assist or something, they were clipping it, a goal clipping it. It was, it was quickly out there. I think they oh, they, yeah. they realized quite quick that UK fans all following along those likes and everything like that. They were flying up. Is it what was the uh, the reaction from the the Finnish fans? Because we we we've, we've been heard what some European fans think of British hockey players and that we're not good enough and etc. To then go over there and be running at like a point a game, just over a point a game. What yeah, was that? What was their reaction to you? It was really positive. They were very welcoming, and uh, yeah, it was after my first home game. Um, I had a pretty good game that game, and um, yeah, I remember we were leaving the ice after they were doing some chanting, and they started just chanting in my name. That's the first time that's kind of happened, and it was really cool to see. It's just very passionate, very passionate for the for the the team where they're from, and um. Yeah, like I said, so when anyone comes in and, and they want to be a part of that and and help, you know, win games and stuff, they they they're very welcoming. Yeah, so it's uh, it was pretty awesome. And just touching on on the point that um, you made, obviously with the the media and stuff, it's uh, they're just very good at um, you know knowing how to react to something. It's obviously something that um, you know the mainstream over here needs to get a little bit better. Right? You see you see how big it is for for us and. As a, as a hockey nation, how it's growing and how much success we're having. It's, it's kind of crazy that they don't jump on it more, but hopefully it's something that, you know, can change and just keep growing our sport. I mean, I really wish they would, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say if they're not going to do it when we're at the top table for three <laughs> years, we we might we might be uh, out. Happen, we might be out of luck. 
obviously via player coming doing their bits with the elite league now um they're going to i think they're going to show your games lead <clears throat> leading up and into the world champs which will help but it, it it needs to get mainstream even just like some coverage even just like a few bits of text along the bottom of Sky Sports News. How many, how many like millions of people, boozers, stuff just have Sky Sports News rolling all day long? Yeah, I just need something. Uh, it's interesting. It's funny when you see we don't get mentioned, but then Pet Check, man, as soon as he does something, it's all, it's all out there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you would you would think he'd just signed for the Giants full time, like the way it's going yeah. on right now, the Telegraph. And I love it. Like I think um, last year he was playing in like the NIHL two cup final, and there's like write ups in the Telegraph in the Daily Mail ev- ev- everywhere. I was like, none of you have seen a game of hockey. I remember to go to Basingstoke Buffalo. Basingstoke Buffalo get about twelve people at their games, plus like the mums and dads and stuff, right? And brothers, sisters, you know, maybe maybe there's seventy people in the barn. They they were playing uh, Guildford Phoenix and walked in there. There was like seven hundred and fifty people to watch an yeah. NHL two game because it was Peter Check's first game. I'd never seen anything like it. Everyone was queuing up around the ring. And do you know what? I I skated with him in Guildford. Like he's 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 a top guy. You will watch that man stand there until there's not one fan left to sign an autograph for to take a picture for. Like he was always good to the fans. And you know what? That's pretty classy because he could just go straight out the back door and be like, yeah. see ya. He's, he's a pretty good dude. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Like I said, it, it only helps grow the game. So hopefully we need a few more A-list, A-list celebrities to start the <laughs> yeah. ice and then <laughs> well, we, a little bit. <laughs> well, Tom Hardy started doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu now. And now every time you switch on Instagram, there's a picture of Tom Hardy doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu, yeah. right? Yeah. And like even the, one of the guys he was fighting in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu like blue belt tournament the other day, he's he shared a picture of him fighting Tom Hardy. And then I watched his account. It just went, do, 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 do. <laughs> it's like 10,000 followers now. He had like a thousand followers. We should be doing the same. I think this year we saw Martin Brodeur be there. It was like one week, wasn't it? There's like the Steelers had like yeah, the Dark Destroyer. Yeah, yeah. And then um, we had Martin Brodeur and then, I think that that was pretty cool, and then Belfast Giants rolled out Snoop Dogg. I was like, "Yeah, well, that <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty a list." <laughs> yeah, Dark Destroyer, Snoop Dogg. I'm sorry, I mean, like the Dark Destroyer is a clever man and all that, but Snoop Dogg is a musical genius. <laughs> Mate, that's my era. That's my era of. Uh, so that'll be showing you like how old I am uh, watching along. Kirky, you're at camp right now. What's it like? Uh, you obviously the hotel life. So, are they looking after your nutrition and stuff like that? Yeah, it's really good. I just can't say any more good stuff about the hotel and obviously the, the setup we've got right now. It's a lot different usually in Coventry, but yeah, hotel's great. Food's been really good. Lots of different selections and stuff. So yeah, it's going it's going pretty good. The uh, the the training camp is well five games long. I think this time. What's it like for, for GB actually having some decent warm-up games going into a tournament as opposed to like a couple here, a couple there? Yeah, it's going to be good. Obviously, you know, Latvia and Hungary are tough competition. Um, and just to get them four games, it's going to be good to, you know, see some other people play some different line combinations and see what works and, and what doesn't. So I think it'll be, a, you know, big for us to build some confidence going into that first game of the tournament against Korea. Have you ever played against Latvia before? I know we've had like games against Hungary. I can't, I can't think uh, of when we played Latvia. I don't, I don't think I don't, I don't think I have. Um, I know they played them last year in Finland, um, and they played Dynamo, right? Dynamo, Rio, that's right, yeah, in, in commentary. But I, I yeah. don't think we've played them in a warm up game. I'll tell you what, that's a that's a cool barn to go watch a game in. I imagine for you, probably play in a Riga. game. In. Diana Mariga, that's a that's a really cool barn. I went and watched a KHL game there, what, two Christmases, three Christmases ago, whatever it was. Yeah. Mental. I think it was like eight euros for a seat and you're sat two rows behind the goal. It's, yeah, it's insane. Going back to like growing the game in the UK, obviously you're pretty much the, since Tony's been and gone, you're pretty much been the face of the UK. How would we grow the game to get more eyeballs on the sport? Yeah, I mean, it's a tough one, obviously. I think you can, you, you can see a change since uh, since you went up to the top flight. Um, just I think the success of the national teams definitely helped grow it. I think it's just it's got to be more from every every elite league club and, and just try and just push it out there as much as we can, right? And 
I think obviously a big one's government funding, right? And and just trying to get it to you know to be to be recognized recognized as a grassroots sport and, and just have that funding so some more kids can play. Obviously, it's such an amazing game, but it, it is very expensive, and every parent will, will tell you the same thing. It's you know it's, it's a lot of money to get your kid involved in, and obviously when they get to higher level and they go on England and conference trips, you know it's even more money. So. Yeah, it just needs to be obviously more more government support and stuff, but it seems to be trending in the right direction. Obviously, we've got new new phases coming in and uh, and taking over and trying to trying to help it grow, and like can only be a good thing, right? You say about cost, Cam and Strict podcast. We had Cam on here, so I, I like to follow him. He uh, they shared something on their social media, and it was uh, it was just a photograph in a hockey shop of the top of like by ends of hockey sticks, three hundred and seventy dollars <sighs> for a hockey yeah. stick. That's yeah, crazy. Crazy. What if you use what if you're, I don't know, 14, 15, 16, you're playing 40 games, you're a sentiment, you're then playing up maybe extra extra games. You're gonna go through 10, 15 sticks in a season. So like three yeah. bags just it's for your crazy. sticks. I think I think it's gonna be on parents though. I mean, my parents growing up, I had I had I had cheap sticks of I didn't get a, a top end stick until I was like 14, 15. Yeah, my parents kept me in the Kept me very grounded with some really old graph skates and TPS gear and stuff like that. But graph yeah, skates. Like which, which graph skates did you have? I had like F tens and like F thirties. They were like black and silver. Oh, I love, love the yeah. graphs. They look I, dust, but <laughs> they look dust. No, the old school graphs from like the early nineties were phenomenal. Just black, big, thick tongues. Yeah. Right, I used to love them. Love their retro kit. You talk about you talk about like sticks now. What what are you using and what sort of flex? Because when I talk to players now, I'm shocked at like how whippy the sticks they're using are. What what have you got? Yeah, I, I'm using uh, that bar agent at the moment, and I use a semi seven flex. I like mine soft. Cut it down a little bit, so it might be close to eight two, but pretty soft for me. Like I don't really take many. Heavy slap shots or anything like that. The game's so fast now, so you got to be able to just release it quick. So, yeah, I have pretty low flex, but I know there's some guys that use like stupid, like 65 and stuff. So it's crazy. I would. I'm too heavy. I think way too heavy yeah. for that. Yeah, right now you are. About 100 kilos right now, man. Solid. I love it. What's uh What's on the agenda for you throughout the summer? Obviously, you've got the World Championships first. You're gonna like unwind a little bit, go on any holidays or anything. Yeah, a couple of holidays, one with my, one with my friend and then uh, my, my fiance. we're going to go for, for one. Not go anywhere booked yet, yeah, just, we usually just do a last minute kind of kind of deal, find somewhere and go. But yeah, a couple of holidays, a little bit of rest, but then pretty much right back in the gym training uh, to get ready for next season. What does uh, a Liam Kirk workout look like in the off-season? Do they send you stuff over from Arizona or yeah, G- but- GB sending you stuff? Last year, last year, Arizona sent me stuff, obviously, because I was still kind of doing rehab and had certain protocols to meet. But this year, I don't. I usually work out with, well, since I was, since I was 12, 13, I worked out with the, the Moore brothers, obviously Danny, for a long time when he was in Sheffield. And obviously, Mike's kind of taken over now. So uh, I usually work out with, with, with Mike and, and a few of the Steelers guys, and we get a little group going and do a few workouts pretty much, work out every day, Monday to Friday. But yeah, it's, it's nice, to, nice to be around. You know, familiar faces and stuff, and uh, and yeah, like I said, I've worked with Mike and Danny, uh, and I trust them from a very young age. So Does that get the competitive juices flowing in the gym a little bit if there's a few of you boys in there. Yeah, it does definitely. When because Shudes obviously he, he's from Sheffield, so when we get going, we've we grown up together. We've always been competitive. So when we get in the gym, it's pretty competitive. But he's a he's a bigger boy than me, so oh, he's a lump. Yeah, yeah he, he throws some weight around. And obviously, Jono, when he was there, he was throwing weight around. But it's good, man. Obviously, it pushes you, pushes you to, you know, you try and lift more weight than you. You don't think you can do it, and you see them doing it, so you want to do it, right? Like everyone wants to be, be the best, right? And compete. So. Still in an obscene shape, considering he's like 40, 41 now. I saw chat chatting to him at the weekend, and. In Nottingham, he's stood there in his sweats. Still in ridiculous shape. Yeah, he seems to get better shape every year and get faster. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of crazy. It's weird to see him see him be retiring, but obviously he's um, had a long career and stuff and ready for, for a move on. But Are you strict with nutrition? I know it's, uh, where you've got some GB games and that, but going into the off-season, it might be a little bit more relaxed. But how strict are you with your nutrition? Do you have a dietary plan or anything like that? Um, I mean, not, not, don't really have a diet plan. We get a lot of advice and, uh, and kind of like different, 
the nutrients and, and right. vitamin kind of pills that we can we can take and stuff in Arizona. It's definitely a lot more kind of they do a lot of tests early on, like blood tests and, and, and stool and stuff like that to test like what affects your your body differently and stuff like that. So you kind of take advice from that, but not too serious. Obviously, it's you know food's fuel at the end of the day. So obviously, you want to put you, know, you put the best fuel in your car. You want to put the the best fuel in your body. So um, you do what you can to try and maintain it. But I'm I'm pretty bad when it comes to to cheat meals. Sometimes yeah, not not the best. <laughs> but. I try and be better. My my uh my fiance kind of keeps me in check. To be honest, she she makes me feel guilty anytime I eat something crap. So, what is your go to cheat meal? Ooh, good question. Probably, probably a curry, man. I love it. I love yes. a curry. And you don't really you don't really get them in America and Finland and all these countries. So when I come when I come home, it's kind of the top class, man. <laughs> yeah, just what's your what's your go to when you have a Indian? Uh, tikka masala. And then uh, just like a garlic naan. Garlic naan's got to be done. A couple, couple bodies. Ooh, I'm gonna get off of here and order Indian. <laughs> <laughs> just every time you think about one, this is my favourite as well. Mark was making some like Kazakh rice the other day with all this Indian spice. It looked really good. <laughs> um, Kirky, going back to back to the, like, the the level we're at now. We're in the second tier, aiming to get back to the top table. We have what I I think is the best opportunity we're ever likely to get to go straight back up to the top table. What's the mood, well, yourself and within the camp? Is is that what you boys are looking to do, to take the gold medal here at home? Yeah, definitely. I don't think uh, it should be. I don't think anything else should be on our mind, really. Obviously, we're going to this as top seed. And um, it's funny when you look at speaking to, to, to Benny and, and Dowdy in the room the other day, it's funny when you look at us when we first went into 1A, the, the aim was to to not get relegated, right, and stay up. And, and win one game, wasn't it? Yeah, and we obviously, we, we won gold and promoted, stayed up for a few years. And I think, you know, our mindset now is like, we should be back up in that group. Like, it, it, it should be a no-brainer. And I think, obviously, we, we, we have respect for, for all the teams and uh, and obviously no it's it's these kind of tournaments anything can happen and you have to be on your best every night every game but you now obviously the, the mood right now is we want we want gold and, and nothing else will do what's the uh what's the difference having a home world champs obviously we saw what started it all off way back in belfast that was the that was the first one that got got the ball rolling now we have the opportunity at home once again to to go back to the top table what's it like being at home for it yeah, it's exciting. Obviously, Pete Pete had a Zoom call with us today and just and just mentioned how it is, you know, how nice it's gonna to be to have your families there and stuff like that. And the opportunity of, you know, winning gold and the task at hand and 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 having your families being able to there and experience that with you. And uh you know, it's something that you know you, you don't really get the privilege of too often. So yeah, it's exciting. Obviously, there's a bit more pressure and stuff, but uh yeah, I think it's gonna be um it's gonna be fun, obviously, to to know that. Every time you go on the ice, there's going to be a few thousand there that are always, you know, pretty back. And it's going to be like having an extra player out there. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's very cool. I think we, we're we lucky that this is what we have to beat to get up. And that's no disrespect to the nations that we're playing. But any other time when it's not a war time, this is not the group that you have to beat to get out of this division. Yeah, like, sure. like you said, it's obviously... Um, you know, the teams are playing out. Obviously, if Russia and Belarus were still still uh, still included in, in the top flight or whatnot, then there's a couple of teams that would be in, in this one. Um, that obviously it makes it a lot more harder and different competition. But like you said, you can't take anyone lightly, and we're definitely not doing that. But uh, like we have full confidence in in the group and uh, and what we can achieve. And um, you know, obviously teams get better every year, but so do we. You look at you look at the 32 man roster that we've got now and how tough it is for. To, you know to make it and you know there's gonna be a lot of good players that won't make it and it's it's you know like i said it's it's gonna be interesting you know the coach have a, a real tough decision it, it's you know everyone's out here grinding trying to trying to make that that 23 man roster and um yeah it's gonna it's gonna be tough when it comes down to it um you know no one's safe so do you keep an eye on the boys when you're like in america or finland or anything you're keeping an eye on the league seeing who's hot who's not yeah, I follow along. Obviously, I grew up a Steelers fan, right? I was always a Steelers fan growing up, so obviously I like to follow along and see how they're doing. And obviously, when you play with guys, you want to keep up on what they're doing and how they're doing, uh, you know, uh, and whatever league it is, whether it's NHL or 
elite league and I follow along pretty much everyone I've played with. We've got did the, you bump? Sorry, Matt. Go on. Did you cross paths with uh, Josh Tetlow out in Finland? I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, but I think a few of our players, when we got uh, knocked out, like didn't make playoffs. I think a couple of them went to play for his team actually. So, oh, what some of the younger guys get to step yeah, down the league? Yeah, they went to play in the Metsis. So, what sort of did you see any of the games in the Metsis? I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I was going to spot. I have to get Tets on here, can tell us all about it. Going back to GB, I've just got the schedule here. And with these world champs, you know, the, the way the games are always tailored to to get harder as, as the week goes on, as what IHF see as the seeds. But you kick off on Saturday, 29th of April, you've got career. Following day, Sunday, the 30th, the 4 p.m. game against Poland. Then the two, you get that nice rest down on Monday. Tuesday, we're the evening game against Lithuania. Always a battle against those guys. Then Romania on the Wednesday and the final game against Italy, which on paper is arguably going to be our toughest test. Is there any games that really jump out at you that you think that's that's going to be the one that makes sure we win the gold? I think, like you said, Italy, like the tournament, always seemed to set it up so that the two top teams play each other last. So, obviously, Italy's going to be a big one. They've been in that top flight before. But, like I said, you can't take anyone for granted. Obviously, it's um, every game you have to make sure you win it. You know, one, one loss or overtime can really change the narrative of, of a tournament for every team. So, um, like I said, we should take it game by game and make sure we get the job done each night. Well, they've got Mindy on the bench with uh, Lithuania now, haven't they? You know, do you know Mindy Kyrgios? Remember him from the EPL days? Uh, I don't know. I recognise uh, him a little bit, but I couldn't put a face to it. Yeah, he was a he was a solid D man. Uh, he's been involved yeah. in the national team. <laughs> uh, we've had a guy, Gino. He was up in Hull during Paul, yeah, in the EPL. Seasons, we had yeah. yeah, so we had him on before. They they've got Lithuania have got some good players. They've got a, a good organisation. What was a uh, what would you say the main difference would be between us playing a team like Lithuania now where we sit versus maybe 10 years ago where we were up, we were down, we were up, we were down. Now we're kind of cemented our place. This- yeah, I think I think the experience obviously playing in these top flights and just knowing and believing in ourselves that we can do it, right? Like there's no doubt in our mind anymore that, that like, when we stayed up against France and then beat Belarus and then you, know, you look at last season – just as, as me as a spectator, I think the boys will say the same that were there, that there's probably two or three games that we probably should have taken points from and, and beaten these top teams. Like, we were up against Latvia, like, up against Austria. Like, there's games where we held our own and played, do you know what I mean? It's not like we were just getting, you know, just chasing not, the puck around. We wasn't just making it, numbers right? up, were we? Yeah, exactly. So I think, I think obviously we can take that into these games now and, like I said, just going on the 32-man thing, like there's so much competition, there's so many good players, so it's like, when we do get down to that 23, it's like, everyone's got to believe that they're there for the, you know, they're there for a reason to get the job done, and that, you know, the, the coaches have full faith in, in us and the players, everyone has full faith, uh, full faith in each other, so um, I think it's just, just a huge difference, uh, just having that experience playing at that top level. What's it been like having Weber on board? Because I saw there was an announcement from GB either today or yesterday that obviously Kiefer's misses expecting the baby so he's away Have, having that extra extra set of hands on deck a, a bit of experience he's been there with Pete before a few years ago what's it like having him around the camp yeah it seems pretty good obviously it's only been two days now but well fresh face for me anyway obviously a few of the older guys will know him but yeah he seems to be um, you know fitting in well with with our culture and what we want to do and because uh, he's bringing in fresh new ideas and stuff and uh, it's, been, it's been it's been good Awesome. Mark, have you got anything else for Kirk or should we let him go get some rest? Yeah, I've got to, I've got to chuck one more in there because we spoke with Brownie last week. Was it last week? I've lost track yeah. of time. Yeah, it was. Um, he said it's been a, a year or so since you last played with him. Are you surprised that he got called up to the national team? And that must be fun to uh, be skating with him on a national level, uh, even though it's training camp. Yeah, he put him on a spot here because he's just laying in the bed over there. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's nice seeing him here. I mean, I, I, he's he's not been skating. He's got a he's got a pretty um not too serious but a pretty bad injury at the moment. So he's uh, he's not been skating. But it's obviously it's nice to get him here. And uh, obviously we, we've known each other for a long time. And 
and played played together for a long time so he's a good friend so yeah it's nice to have a familiar face and um, you, you see what he did uh, at the National League for the, the past two seasons and what I'm sure he's going to do next season as well he's just tear it up so mate yeah, he's I a think, sad, he's uh, sick savage at that level obviously it's yeah, a joke. Like I said, he's got he's got he's got um, amazing talent, amazing skill, and obviously, I think everyone knows that he can play at a higher level. And like I said, he, he's doing what's best for his career right now, and getting that experience, that that game time, playing you know stupid minutes every night, and, yeah. and putting up stupid stupid numbers. So yeah, um, it's good to see him here and uh, and get this experience and, and be around this team. And obviously, he's going to be a big part of it in the future. Well, one guy we've talked about. We had him as our young player of the year in the National League this year. He's a, f- a former Sheffield, uh, no, uh, not former. He's a current Sheffield Steel dog and a current Sheffield Steeler, Alex Alex Graham. What have you? What do you make of his talent? Obviously, you might have seen him when you've been around skating with the dogs and stuff like that. Has he got what it takes to make that jump up and take that next step? Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, I, I've been able to unfortunately know him quite well, and obviously, we trained here in the summer and. I've been skating with the dogs as well since just kind of keep up for coming into this camp. And, you know, some of the stuff I was saying to, to Huey and, and Woody, some of the stuff he does, man, it's just like, I don't even think of it. And it's not even on the puck, it's away from the puck. Stuff he does with his stick and, and, and you know, taking taking the, the other player's sticks away to create lanes for his teammates and stuff. It's, it's just, he's a very smart, you know, hockey player. And he's got a lot of skill, great shot. Uh, and you know he's pretty pr- pretty fast when he gets going as well. Obviously he's he's a big body out there as well. So but he's got all the tools, and I think he can play at the you know the elite league full time. I watched him in the uh, in the playoffs this weekend, and to be honest, him, John Owen, Whistle were probably the one of the best lines the Steelers had. You know the you know, the offensive shifts they had, they pretty much hemmed Cardiff in the zone for a lot of that semi final when they were out there. So. I think it's good to see, and hopefully he gets a he gets a full chance next year to play full time, play some big minutes, and show what he can do. Yeah, and then on the, on the other game of the semi final, we had Shawnee Norris scoring a goal, Jack Hopkins scoring a goal. It's good to see like Brits making their mark not only on the elite league but on the big games in the elite league as well. Top top pressure games. Yeah, exactly like you said. It's when you see the when you see these younger Brits come in and and they have an impact. It just shows that they can they can play right and they just need more opportunity. And I think it's I think if you ask any fan really if they if they you know, if a Brit can play and do the same thing an import does, like, I think they'd rather see a Brit play over an import. Guys and girls, let me tell you about Throw and Go. Throw and Go is a hands-free way of carrying your dogs muddy balls and messy balls so that you don't get slobber all over your clothes, all over your fingers. It is specifically designed to fit a variety of size balls from tennis balls, Kong balls, Scooby-Doo balls, Chucket balls, to name just a few. Despite looking plastic, it's actually eco-friendly and it's made from a mixture of cornstarch and sugarcane and comes in a whole bunch of different colors, sizes, and they are really, really cool. If you go to throw underscore go uh, underscore n underscore go on Instagram, you will find a very, very cool website. There's lots of dogs on there that only seem to be enjoying the product. And you guys can enjoy the product as well with a 4K20 code. That's going to get you 20% off your first order. So head to Throw and Go. So throw underscore N underscore go on Instagram or throwingo.co.uk. And one pound from every purchase is donated to charity. So Throw and Go. 4K20, get yourself 20% off. Your dogs will love it and you will have no soggy dog balls in your pocket. Obviously, um, some so don't, mate. Some really. It's, it's, it's you see it on Twitter, they're like, I don't but... care if we had 20 imports oh, as long as we've got a good team. I was like, yeah, but <laughs> you're, you must be new. You must not understand. Like, these, We yeah. need Brits. We need I Brits. Cra- I think it's crazy. I think obviously it's crazy to me, obviously. I won't, I won't be where I am without an opportunity. I had in the elite league and stuff. And I think, um, yeah, we, it's only going to help us better, uh, grow as a nation. And, uh, you know, over the long term, it's going to be ben- more beneficial if we get more of our Brits playing. So I, I'm for one, all for seeing, seeing young Brits playing, man, and getting an opportunity to play in that the elite league and show what they can do. And it's, it's like I said, I've been there. I know it's a very daunting thing as a young, a young Brit to come in and, and, and play and, you know, try and play your game. But, you know, if you make a mistake, you might not be playing for the rest of the night. So just just having a coach that's going to say, "Look, go do your thing." You know, when you mess up, and 
and just keep working on it and getting better every day in practice. It only helps grow their game, grow them as confidence, and it's only going to help us as, as a nation as well for, for our national team. I think outside of yourself, the, the one that's been most successful with that is the fact that Hull Stingrays way back took a chance on a young man, also a Sheff- Sheffield lad, Ben <laughs> Bounds, and chucked him in the pipes and went, we suck, you're going to face 55 shots a night, you're going to get better real quick. And that was it. They just left them to it. Yeah, exactly, man. It's, it, like you said, it's, it's an investment on, on on people. And obviously, you, you understand it's a business. And obviously, I don't understand too much the, the money side of, of being a business owner and an owner of one of them teams and stuff. But uh, you know, obviously, it, 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 there's got to be a, a certain aspect of it where, you, you know, you want to be, if you're a real hockey lover and, and, and you love, you know, hockey in England, then it, it's kind of a no-brainer to me, but. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't agree any more. We've seen we've seen the potential, the input numbers go up. I think it's going to be fifteen in the elite league next year. That's that's a few less spots for British boys, but it's just going to mean that the ones are there are going to have to really, really perform and and stand out. Keep flying the flag, otherwise it'll be sixteen, and then it'll be seventeen, and then we're, well, we're back to the Super League too, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. So nobody wants that. I want I phone would not like to see that, but I guess it's something out of my control and. Um, but like, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, like I said, with all these Brits coming through and having success, and like I said, Shawnee at, at the um, in the semis for Belfast, and Young Hopkins and, and Brownie, Cole, Alex, all these players, man, that are just you know ready for that next step and they want that opportunity. I think it's um, be nice if they can get it. One final one, just because it popped into my head. Obviously, GB, we go there, we put we put clubs aside. But rolling off the back of that weekend where it means so much, you go off of this this four-team tournament, one winner, you boys are battering each other on the ice, and then you're in the room. Is there any banter flying around from the winners on on like the first days of camp or like the Belfast boys? Are they, are they got their treble t-shirts on? What's happening? No, not really from not really from the winners. It's funny Mosey came in the other day and was like, Hi everyone, except for Belfast. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's just when you get here, it's uh, everyone knows the the goal and uh, and the plan, and everyone's bought into the to the idea that you know we're Team GB now, and what what's done's done, and you know, congrats, and let the bygones be bygones, and we're all here for the same goal, right? Let's get a gold medal and, and get back up, and everyone's bought into that, and it's like I said, it's a family when you get here. It's it's always you know the best time of the hockey season when you come together for, for your national team. Yeah, Keith, this has been awesome. We wish you the best of luck. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe. If you keep coming back, well, thank you very much. This has been another episode of 4,000 Counting. This time it's been brought to you by Hurricane E-Bikes. We will be putting a new advert out with those bikes very, very soon because I am heading off to the head office tomorrow. So watch me with a broken collarbone for the next episode very, very soon. (laughs) But for now, Kirky, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This has been fun. Guys, peace. Peace, peace.